Okay, hi everybody. We're going to be talking about the different things Jesus had to say about money today. One day when Jesus was teaching, a young man came to him and said, Master, please, um, will you please talk to my brother so he will divide the inheritance with me? That's all we know. So obviously there was a conflict with this young man and his brother about an inheritance they had received. And he didn't feel as though he was being treated fairly. But Jesus just looked at him and he said, who made me a judge or a divider between you? He was saying, that's not my jo job. But remember his job was to teach. And so he decided to teach the young man. He said, take heed and beware of covetousness. You remember what covetousness is. It's wanting more and more and more, whether it's money or stuff. He said, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things that he possesses. In other words, you need to be careful not to be greedy young man and everyone else who's listening. Beware of covetousness because um, the life that we have here on earth really doesn't have anything to do with what we possess, what we own, what we have. Um, we live our life here on earth and we do have things, um, food to eat, hopefully, clothing to wear, a house to live in, and for some people, much more than that. But Jesus was saying that even those necessities are really not all that important. What's important is your soul and what will happen after you die. A man's life consists not of the abundance of things he possesses. Your life is not all about what you own. People might try and make you think it is. You may feel as though it is when you look at other people and see all the things they have or you go to school and everyone else is wearing name brand shirts and sneakers and hats but really that's not important and Jesus was trying to tell this young man listen whether or not your brother divides the inheritance equally really doesn't matter in the end what you do with your life that's what matters and then he went on to tell a parable so Jesus told a parable sorry about a rich man a rich nobleman and he was a farmer and one year he had really, really good crops. His wheat or whatever it was he was growing had produced abundantly. There was more than enough. In fact, he had so much from his fields that his barn was not big enough to put all his stuff in. Oh, he thought, what will I do? <gasps> I know. I'll rip down my barns and I'll build bigger burn so I can put all the stuff in and then I will have so much stuff laid up for many years I can just relax and I can um, take my ease and eat drink and be merry I can just enjoy myself and have good food to eat and have a party with my friends and not have to work because I already have my burns my big burns all full well God said to that man, he said, you fool, you fool, this night your soul will be required of you. And then who will all that stuff belong to? Who does it matter? What does it matter then that you have all that stuff if you're dead? And so Jesus said, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We can be rich towards God if we lay up treasures in heaven. And so instead of laying up treasures on earth, we can lay up treasures in heaven by honoring God, by following him, by obeying him, by sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people, by giving to others and sharing what we have and showing his love to the people around us. In those ways, we can lay up treasures in heaven. And that's much better. So much that you can't even have a number to describe it. It's infinitely better to do those things than to have all this stuff and be super rich. Okay, Jesus then said, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or for your body, what you will wear, because life is more than food, 
and your body is more than the clothes you put on it. Someday we'll have heavenly clothes and someday we'll have heavenly food and none of the stuff down here will even matter. So we need to be careful what we're focusing on, okay? All right, now if I can keep myself all straight, I have another story for you. And this is about a rich young ruler, another young man who came to Jesus. Remember, people followed him everywhere. They wanted to be healed. They also wanted to be taught. They wanted his wisdom. And so this young man came running to Jesus one day, a rich young ruler, and he knelt down before him and he said, Good master, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and he said, Why do you call me good? There is only one good, and that is God. And then he said, but you know the commandments, you know the commandments. Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said, oh, but I've done all those things since I was really little. What must I do? And Jesus knew his heart. He knew his life. And he looked at that young man and his heart was filled with love and compassion to him. And he knew what the young man needed. He knew all about his life. He said to him, um, go and sell all you have and give to the poor and take up your cross and follow me. In other, in other words, be willing to give everything and suffer for my sake and come and follow me. <clears throat> Well, that poor young man, he wasn't poor in riches, in earthly riches. He was poor of spirit, but he was rich. And the thought for him of giving it all away was just too much for him. He couldn't handle it. He did not turn and follow Jesus. He did not share his wealth with others. He went away sorrowfully. He had his answer, but he didn't like the answer. He was probably willing to do many different things, maybe build a temple or uh, something in, in it, the honor of God and his own. People would say, oh, he built that. He's amazing. Look what he did for the people. He would probably be willing to um, give some money away to the poor. He might be willing to do many things, but he was not willing to give it all away and suffer for Jesus and follow him. <clears throat> And then Jesus told another little um, story, he, a little picture lesson, okay? He said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And um, no matter which way you look at it, that's a pretty difficult thing. Whether this is a literal camel trying to go through a needle, that's not going to happen. Also, um, some people believe that there was a gate in the cities that was a very small, narrow gate that after the big gates had closed for the night, people could come to the little gate and get into the city that way and, and be safe at night. But it wouldn't be big enough for a camel to go through or not without exceeding difficulty. And so um, no matter which way you look at it, he was saying that's impossible. And the disciples said, oh, but then... Oh, but then who can be saved? And Jesus said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. So even though he was saying that it was extremely difficult, well, not impossible for a really rich person to be able to humble themselves to the place where they would be able to go to heaven. He said, it's not actually impossible with God. He can do anything, but that rich young ruler, he was not willing to do what he needed to do. Okay, then Peter, Peter said, oh, oh, but Jesus, remember Peter, he jumped into everything. He just, he didn't mind saying whatever came to his mind. He didn't just keep it to himself. He wanted to know, and he didn't mind if Jesus reprimanded him. And so he said, oh, but Jesus, we have left our families and our livelihoods, our fishing boats. We've left everything to follow you. 
So what does that mean for us? What do we get? What, what good is that? And Jesus said, well, let me tell you this. He said, no one has ever given up anything, not their home or brothers or sisters, mothers, fathers, wives, husbands, children, or their, the things they own. No one has given up things for the love of me and the gospel. That's the good news of salvation and the kingdom of God for the sake of of Jesus, the love of Jesus and his gospel and the kingdom of God. No one's given those things up, but that they will be reimbursed. They will receive back abundantly on earth, maybe not in physical things, but spiritually they will receive abundantly from the Lord. And in heaven, they will receive reward. And that's what really matters, isn't it? Because our time on earth is short. But eternity lasts forever. So, um, then he said, many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Remember on earth, people tend to lift up and look up to and glorify people who are rich and important. But God doesn't look at riches and social status at all. He looks at the heart. And remember, he was looking at the hearts of the publicans and the sinners and the people that were despised and they were repenting of their sin. And so he was lifting them up. They were receiving eternal life and they would have rewards in heaven. And so the first should be last and the last should be first. What we think is important down here is not important in heaven. All right, so I have another story. And it is, I have to find my pictures here for you. It is about a man called Zacchaeus. Now I'm sure most, most of you would know this one. Um, we even have a song about it, <clears throat> which basically tells the whole story, but I'll just quickly tell you the story again. Jesus, there he is. You can just see him there in the midst of all the people. Jesus was on his way to Jericho. And throngs of people, crowds of people were all around him. Like It was like a parade. They were all along the road. And there was a man named Zacchaeus who was very rich. He was chief among the publicans. He was the most important publican. Remember those publicans? They were tax collectors. All the people hated them because they would take extra money from their fellow Jews and keep it for themselves. So no one liked the tax collectors, and he was the chief one, the most important one. So people really didn't like him, and he would be really rich. Well, Zacchaeus was very short. Um, um, the Bible says he was little of stature. So he really wanted to see Jesus, and he could not see him because there were so many people all crowded closely together. There was no way he could get in there and see Jesus. Plus, they didn't want him squeezing past them because they didn't like him. So he ran ahead. He knew where Jesus was going. And he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree with lots of branches. He climbed up there so that he could see Jesus. And Jesus, he knew who Zacchaeus was. And he knew Zacchaeus wanted to see him. There he is climbing the tree. And so when he passed that way, Jesus looked straight up into the tree and he said his name even. He said, Zacchaeus, come right away down out of that tree because I want to go to your house. And so Zacchaeus climbed down and he was so happy. He took Jesus to his house. And as they were there, Zacchaeus voluntarily said, Behold, Lord, Half my goods, remember he was rich, half of everything I own I will give to the poor. And if I have taken anything wrongly from anyone by false accusation or doing wrong things, if I have taken money I shouldn't have taken from anyone, I will restore it to them fourfold. I will give them back four times as much as I took. So you know your four times table that adds up quickly or multiplies in that case. So um, if he took $2 from somebody, he was gonna give them back $8, but I'm pretty sure the numbers would be much larger than that. He was willing to give back multiple times over because he wanted to repent from his sins 
and he wanted to follow Jesus and honor him. And Jesus never told him to give his money away like he did with the rich man, rich young rulers. Zacchaeus offered it because it was in his heart. He just wanted to do this. He felt like it was something that Jesus would want him to do to give away half of all he owned to the poor. And so Jesus said to him, this day is salvation come to your house. So Zacchaeus, he will be in heaven. And all the other people that were standing around that had seen this all happen, they were all like, what's Jesus going to his house for? He's eating with sinners again. But Jesus looks on the heart. And we have one more. If I can just find my spot here. Let me just find it. Okay, after Jesus spoke with Zacchaeus, he told another parable. And this parable was about um, a man who was going away on a long journey. In fact, he was going to go to a kingdom far away and receive it. He was he had um, inherited a kingdom. He was going to go and collect it. And he would come again after a long time. Well, while he was gone, he wanted his servants to take care of his money for him. And so he called servants to him. And there's a couple of different renditions of this in the Bible. Um, in this one, he called three servants. And he gave the first servant five talents. Five pieces of money. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how much it would have been worth, but he gave five talents to the first one. And the Bible says that he gave it to them based on their ability. He knew what these servants were like and what they were capable of handling. And so he gave them what he felt would be good for them. So the first one got five. The second one, he got two. And the third servant, he got one. So they each had some money to take care of while the master was gone to get his kingdom and come back again. Well, um, the first two servants, they went out and they um, started up businesses, they traded the money, they lent the money and received back interest from the people they lent it to. And so their money grew and grew and grew. Well, it wasn't theirs. The money they were holding on to for the master, it grew and grew and grew. So that the one who had five talents got 10 talents, he doubled the money. And the one who had two talents also doubled his money and he had four talents. But the third servant, he went and he buried his in the ground. He wrapped it up first so it didn't get dirty and then he buried it in the ground. And so there was no extra money to be had, but it was safe. Well, when the master came home, he called his servants to them, to him, and the first one came and he said, here is your five talents and I have made another five talents. I'm giving you back your money with the extra that I made for you. And the master was very happy with him and he said, well done. You are a good and faithful servant. I will make you ruler over many things. And then the second servant came to him with his money and he said, here's the two talents you gave me and here's another two talents that I made from it. And the master said, well done, you good and faithful servant. I will make you ruler over many things. And then the third servant came and he came with his dirty little bit of money. He unwrapped it and gave it back to him. Here's the money that uh, you gave me to take care of. Um, I think you'll find there's none missing. He said, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you didn't sow and gathering where you haven't scattered. And I was afraid of losing some of your money. And so I buried it. And um, here it is back again, just like you gave it to me. Well, the master was not happy with the third servant. And so... He said, you are a wicked and lazy servant. Why didn't you at least put it in the bank and get some interest on it? He said, you have not been faithful with what I entrusted to you. And so I'm going to take it away from you 
<clears throat> and I'm going to give it to the one who did the most with his money. I'm going to give it to, to the one who had 10 talents. And um, the lazy servant was thrown out into the darkness into torment. So I think you can understand um, what this parable means. We have the master and he is Jesus. Jesus went away to get a kingdom and come back again and left people on the earth to do things for him. Okay, so the three servants, they are people who say they follow Jesus. And the money that was left, the talents, while well, they could literally be talents, things that God has allowed for you to be able to do. Maybe you're a good artist. Maybe you're a good singer. Maybe you're good with money. Maybe your math skills are amazing. Maybe you're really good with people and you know how to talk to them and make them feel comfortable and people like to listen to you. Well, that's a really good thing because then you can tell them about the Lord. So if we use our talents that are given to us for him, then we are being like those good servants who um, were able to work and make more money for their master. It could also be, these talents could also be the resources that God has given to you. So we've been talking about money today. So it could be money. God has given some people lots of money and maybe they just happened with God's help to get a really good job Maybe they inherited a business. Maybe they used their abilities in math and science to be able to get a job where they were able to make a lot of money. Well, those are things that came from God. We need to use those for him, not for ourselves. We need to think about eternal things and not just earthly things. Not like the man who was building bigger burns. We need to think about eternal things and how we can use the resources like the money we have that God has given us for his benefit and for the good of other people around us. Okay, um, so it could be money, it could be resources, it could be talents. There's many things that these um, talents that were given to the servants could represent. Every good thing comes from above and comes um, from the Father of Lights. And we need to use those good things for his honor and glory and for eternal purposes and not just earthly things. So when you think about things, it's good to think about these things because sometimes we don't realize that things we have could be used for eternal purposes and lay up treasures in heaven and make us good and faithful servants. Because I don't know about you, but I would like at the end when I face God before the throne, I would like to be called a good and faithful servant. And so I hope that you will too. I hope that you will choose to use everything you have, even if you feel like you don't have much. Maybe you just got the one talent you feel like, but use it for him. Then we can be faithful and we can receive the well down, that good and faithful servant. And remember, it's more important to lay up treasures in heaven than it is to have treasures on earth. And what we wear and what we eat and where we live, really, they aren't going to matter in the end. So I hope that this was helpful, all this talk about money and resources. I hope that was helpful to help you to understand life a little bit better and what God expects of us. So have a great day.